out here today to replace a control board on this VIV4. I wasn't the one who diagnosed it. Apparently it was displaying a U4 fault. Now, I just don't know. <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of detail on the notes, which usually doesn't. Anyway, there was a lot of details on the notes. So what I wanna actually do is just start from the start. U4 fault is a comms issue. We can, currently it's isolated, so we're gonna reapply power and just start from the start and see if we can basically do a bit of fault finding before we go ahead and replace the board. Unfortunately, this does the bottom floor on a two-story building and I'm on the roof. So hopefully we don't have a break in the wire. <laughs> anyway, first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna reapply power and see what happens to this control board. Just reapply power. So my first check is the comms voltage output from this board, which should be 16.5 volts DC. 15.6, close enough. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's wait. Let's wait to see what happens when this thing loads up. The other thing, just quickly, I'll, and I'll throw up the footage now, but I went for the ITM, and the only fault I had on there was actually an E7. So I couldn't see the E4 that was referenced. Again, they had isolated it, so maybe it'll pop up again. I'm gonna get my service checker hooked up so we can get a map of the system. As you can see, there's quite a few that do this section. And we'll see what we can see. Just creating the site map now. I've hooked up to this one just so we can see what's going on. Uh, see if I can see this. This is still loading. It's probably been about five minutes now and it's still loading. I'd be surprised if this thing doesn't eventually spit a fault because it's just going through that uh, um, initial setting, uh, not initial setting, uh, initial startup, you know what I mean? Like it's looking for what's out there and it's just not getting a signal back. So we know this board's generating the right voltage. It's just, it doesn't seem to be getting a signal back. But we'll see what we can see here. The LEDs have finally gone out. It probably was around that 12, 15 minute mark. Did take a while. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I will plug back into this one. I was originally plugged into this one, but for whatever reason, I'm not actually able to see everything. Uh, maybe they're not tied into, I mean, they definitely should be. Anyway, problem for another time. I'm gonna plug into this one and see if we're actually communicating now and whether or not I can create a map on the service checker. Okay, let's see if we start generating a map. Here we go. And it's just gone. Interesting. Oh, wow. The LEDs have come back on. That's weird. <laughs> and now they've just turned off again. And we're starting to... I mean, I did see those four just before. And then they disappeared. Interesting. We can see I've, I've now got the condenser that's popped up but I've only got four indoors. Now I did, oh, that LEDs have come back on. I did just check before, and they disappeared again, great. Um, I did check before, and this thing thinks, was it nine or is it 10, I forget. No, that's its end address, so return, so 10. Uh, 10 indoors it should have off it. What I'm gonna have to do is go downstairs and work out what area this actually does and see if I can kind of locate the indoors. So what do we got? So 53, 54, 55, and 56. So if I can find those air net addresses, I should, I should be able to work out what else is going on and, and maybe there's just one without power or something like that. But it does, it does kind of seem that this board is, is actually okay. It might be an issue with somewhere downstairs. The weather's not looking crash hot annoyingly, so I'm going to move my stuff inside while I go downstairs and play around. Get these ones closed up. load the map again and see what we find now after we've turned that isolator on. I'm not sure why it was off. LEDs have come back now so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna isolate power again let this de-energize and then we will reapply power it should go searching for everything again and hopefully this time it finds everything. 
uh, and then we'll run it through a test mode if we get lucky. It's been long enough now. Here we go. Just another quick thing while I'm waiting around for this thing to load up. Again, it's got exhaust fumes going straight into the coils. This one as well. This facility is not super new, but it's not crazy old, so I'm sure we'll start to see. looking a lot better now but the one thing I didn't pick up on before was I must have been looking at this for whatever reason this was the only system that was popping up 006 now I just got to go double check but I'm fairly confident the internet address of the one that I'm working on is 002 and that would also line up with the group address that I saw listed on the centralized controller as well I don't know why I just I just didn't notice it before but we'll quickly go double check and that address is nine. Nine. Two. Yeah, okay, so this is the one we're looking for. Um, while I'm here. 10, 11, perfect. So uh, 1 10 or mode 1 10 is number of indoors, and we have 11 present. All right, we're looking good. I'm going to run this thing through a test mode now. Actually, I'm going to have to put the cover on first, but we're going to run this thing through a test mode. Getting them all to run in heating mode. System's now running in heating. As you can see there, it's only just turned on, so we'll uh, we'll give it some time before we start looking to all of this. But we're looking good. So I did forget to show that. This is an aged care facility with a heat pump, so that's always nice. <laughs> Can't foresee there being any issues with that. Probably sitting around the 15 minute mark now. Things are looking pretty good, starting to come in line. They've obviously got a, a limit of 24 degrees on the remote control. I tried to set it to 26 just to get the thing to run. So a lot of them are coming close to set point. So we're seeing that reflected in our pipe temps. Yeah, honestly, we're looking pretty good here. The, the issue is going to be the fact that that uh, U4 issue was generated from the indoor board, or indoor, uh, indoor board not having power. Okay, so turns out that is on a different system, so we should have a separate fault here with the E7. Cool, let's rock and roll. Okay. So you both E7s. Let's go details, please. So address one dash one three attributed to ground floor, giving me slightly less information than the last time. That's alright. Okay, so we've got address anyway. So one one three, and then details. Your one. Uh, oops. One dash one one. I finally found that uh, standalone unit with the E7 fault. So it's actually two. I, I was looking for a, I was looking for a multi-head uh, because both two units have um, two units have the E7 fault. This is the first one. So I'm going to jump over and have a look. But the problem is it's obviously a two-story roof. So I've got a harness on. <laughs> Hopefully that came across. <laughs> All right. So I reset it and it fired up. I, I had to go downstairs and fire it up, but it did fire up and the fan motor sounded like absolute garbage. And you kind of see a lot of movement here, but check this out. <laughs> I think the back fell off. <laughs> see if I can get you in there. Hopefully you saw that. That's crazy. I've never seen that before. Wow. Anywho, uh, it spins, so the board's fine. I'm going to just replace the fan on this one. I believe the other one is over there somewhere. Uh, up we go. It's the second one. Jesus. The fan spins freely. This one might just be a blade, to be honest. What I could probably do is go get the blade from that one over there and get this one up and running. I might do that, actually. 
There we go. Spun it. Spins fine. Not hitting anything. My back's not gonna pop, is it? No, that feels alright. Okay, well that should be the end of this one, I guess. Uh, we didn't repl end up replacing the board on that. That was fine. It just happened to be that one of the, for whatever reason, someone has switched the isolator off the indoor units. Now that one was causing the comms issue. So that's fine. That's been running for like I don't know, two hours now, which is great. It took me a while to find those standalone systems. Originally what I was looking for was a multi-head because how many times do you come across a system that has the exact same fault on two different indoors. It's pretty, yeah, pretty crazy. Anyway, that's why it took me a while to find them. I'll obviously have to replace the fan motor and fan blade on that one. That one's, the other one, the second one, is is fine, it was just a shattered blade. I'm not quite sure why it shattered. It was pretty pretty intense, but seemed fine, no vibrations, the, the fan spun freely. So I'm gonna leave that one as it is, just come back and replace the fan motor and blade on that. This one's now up and running fine. I'm just gonna quickly do a quick sweep of the other other units just to make sure there's no glaring issues but outside of that i think that's this one done thank you very much for watching <laughs>